Welcome back uh, on our discussion on soft lithography. To be more specific, we are discussing nano impedance lithography now. Quick recap of what we have discussed in the previous class. So, this slide, uh, this uh, cartoon should make sense to you now. This is a very brief schematic or a very simple schematic of uh, thermal NIL and you understand that uh, you take advantage of the fact that you can uh, soften a glassy polymer by heating it beyond its glass transition temperature. You have a mold which has uh, relief structures or topographic patterns. You simply press it hard against the softened film and you can create negative replica. Uh, there are issues, certain issues we will discuss in this particular lecture and there are other techniques for example, to circumvent those problems. One of them is UV NIL, uh, which we discussed. Solvent vapor NIL I will discuss a little later, but there are certain very fascinating signs associated with the pattern replication mechanism in nano impedance lithography, which I would like to highlight. You can consider that to be a limitation, but it is for the sake of understanding the mechanism, it is extremely important to uh, understand that. Uh, so, this was first reported in 1996 and see such a simple technique, but such was the elegance and importance of the discovery, it was again published in science. Uh, there are PMMA polymethyl methacrylate is used as a wonderful layer as this uh, glassy polymer. Uh, it has to have a low coefficient of thermal expansion because this is an issue because you are heating up the polymer, you are also heating up the stamp. So, the pattern replication takes place at the elevated temperature. So, if there is a significant mismatch between the, the coefficients of thermal expansion between them during the cooling step, there can be a certain problems. So, this is one critical thing you need to check out. Uh, pressure applied was 30 to 50 mega Pascal, which is on the higher side temperature at which the imprinting was done was 150 degree centigrade. Very, very important no diffraction limitation. And see I mentioned, I think I was a bit wrong in the numbers. Uh, 25 nanometer was achieved way back in 1998 and 5 nanometer in 2004, that is significant. Uh, of course, uh, limitation is high temperature, high pressure. There is a severe problem uh, of one of the steps we showed very easily like you stamp it and you remove the mold. There is a problem, mold release is an issue, mold release because it is a it is a rigid stamp. You cannot peel it the way you had peeled uh, let us say for example, in uh, uh, replica molding. So, that that is a critical issue and uh, you also need to ensure that there is the mold and the film are maintained in a perfectly parallel configuration because if you are unable to maintain a perfectly parallel configuration, you will get a uh, sort of a, a gradient geometry or an imperfect replica. Also, uh, dust contamination one has to be very careful. Uh, so, if you have a dust particle over here and you are applying pressure from outside, this will lead to significant breakage of the stamp. So, that is a problem and uh, many people who have commercial nano impedance lithography instruments these days prefer to perform NIL inside a clean room. So, that in fact takes away one of the major advantages of soft lithography in general, because one of the ways I, I tried to impress upon you the, the advantage of soft lithography is that it does not require major infrastructures, but see again you are back to a clean room and stuff like that. But more importantly, let us understand the pattern replication mechanism or the hydrodynamics of pattern replication. So, I will spend few minutes on this. I will, I am assuming about even if you do not know, you can just google it out and find it out. All of you understand the meaning of this word, no slip boundary condition. What it means that a layer of liquid in contact with a solid surface uh, has identical velocity 
of the surface. That's why when you draw a uh, flow through a pipe, this is a pipe wall, you always draw the velocity profile to be something like this, because the pipe walls are stationary and therefore, uh, velocity is 0 here and V is maximum at the center. Uh, that is also the reason if you have a some amount of liquid between two stationary plates and you start moving the top plate, the liquid in fact deforms like this, because the bottom plate uh, remains stationary and the liquid at the bottom as a consequence of that remains stationary and the liquid at the top in contrast moves. So, this is also very famous, this is also known quit this is known as quit flow. So, I am assuming that all of you have some knowledge about fluid dynamics, but even if you do not have uh, these are very simple concepts and either you have already understood or you can just check out uh, in the net to understand this. Now, uh, you can have a look into what is drawn here this particular picture or I will draw it. Uh, so, this is uh, what it captures is the uh, is sort of an intermediate stage when pattern replication is taking place. Uh, look into it carefully. So, you have a flat film, which is soft, let us assume it is in a liquid state. It is a high viscosity liquid that does not really matter but it is a, it is in a liquid state and here comes your stamp. So, we are just focusing on one of these stamp features. So, what you do the stamp is coming. So, eventually what will happen is the stamp will let us say take a configuration like this. and these areas the liquid will sort of go up and fill up this area. So, this is what is known as mold filling. Mathematically you can claim that whatever is the polymer or the liquid that was here as if it is simply displaced to this area that uh, uh, sorry the drawing is not that great, but does not matter, but you are you are all understanding what I mean. So, that ensures that your conservation of mass is valid, but physically it is not that simple. How does the transfer take place? The transfer takes place is based on this area pushes the polymer or the liquid downward, but since it has a rigid uh, bottom boundary it triggers an outward flow right and this particular zone in fact receives liquid from the two sides. Therefore, it cannot push. So, in order to since the assuming the liquid to be incompressible and most liquids are incompressible in fact. So, you cannot compress it you apply pressure if the liquid gets compressed it will not flow it is simply like air, uh, but that is not the case with liquids most liquids are incompressible. So, this particular zone in fact is receiving liquid from both the sides. So, what does it do? it will simply trigger an upward flow. So, in fact that upward flow is responsible for the mold filling fair enough, but there is more to the story and that issue is the stamp is or the mold is being pushed down it is coming down. So, over these areas the mold is coming down it is in contact with the liquid and because of no slip what we just talked the liquid adjacent to the areas where it is in contact with the side walls of the mold they have a downward velocity right. However, at the center it triggers because of this squeezing out flow it triggers a upward velocity. So, if you are aware so, over this small area let us draw it in somewhat greater detail. So, let us say this is the central part of this feature and this is the stamp wall. So, here you have a downward velocity 
here you have an upward velocity you are talking about nano patterns. So, anyway this uh, L the line width is small. So, this is half of the line width L by 2 or some sort of a delta x which is very very small. Uh, so, V plus is in the positive direction V minus in the negative direction. So, V plus minus V minus is large you divide it by a small quantity and what is it? It is in fact del u del x or del v del x is the velocity gradient. So, you have a very high velocity gradient. So, what? What is shear stress as you all know even if you assume this to be a Newtonian fluid scales as the velocity gradient. And uh, what did we say? This polymer is in a liquid state, but it is a high viscosity liquid. So, mu is already high. The velocity gradient is very, very high. So, the what it leads to? It leads to very high shear stress within this zone. And what is this zone? It is actually the area where the patterns are forming. right? So, as I mentioned that this whole process in fact leads to significant amount of uh, stress within the structures that get generated. Here, here is this picture in fact talks about a bit of details, uh, but uh, the essential physics I have captured. So, this is the protrusion. Since this area pushes the liquid downward, it triggers an outward flow in both the directions and this, this particular area receives liquid from both the sides and it triggers an upward flow. And eventually we can see that le this leads to very high degree of residual uh, uh, stress within the liquid layer or I would just rectify patterned liquid layer. Uh, anything else? Well, what do you do in classical thermal NIL to freeze the structures? You in order to freeze the structures, what is the step you do? We cool it down. Why? because if this is your plot of viscosity versus temperature and you now all understand uh, this is where T g is and you would be doing your pattern replication somewhere over here. right? So, you cool down to solidify the structures, right? but what is actually happening? What is, what is leading to this so called solidification? It is in fact a significant enhancement in viscosity. So, as you cool down your mu goes up. So, the multiplier goes up, this gradient is already very high. So, as the structures get frozen, they in fact have very high amount of stress within them. What happens to this stress? The stress does not get released. This remains as the residual stress within the structures. So, it is extremely important to note down that thermal NIL, the patterns you make excellent patterns. Of course, you need to understand that uh, there is some polymer over here, remnant polymer. For certain applications, it is fine. For certain applications, you can do additional etching of these polymers or whatever and you can create isolated strips. That is a secondary processing, but NIL, I mean I, I, I think I will just emphasize it. NIL in principle creates a structure like this. It is a pure topographic contrast along the film. Uh, it does not guarantee in any way that is not its purpose to create structures like this. Right? It is not its purpose. Of course, you can take this and uh, subject it to some sort of plasma etching or whatever. What might happen that uh, polymer from all the areas gets etched away at the same rate and as a consequence 
since the thickness over these areas is smaller, it gets completely etched out and the uh, along the stripes there is still some material and in principle with suitable etching, uh, you can create structures like this. It is also interesting to realize that if with suitable etching you can make structures like this and there is no diffraction limitation, these are now compatible with the semiconductor industry. Because if, if this material, this polymer can act as a barrier during the doping, you are done. So, all these things people have been trying to do. So, people for, for some period of time significantly thought that one of the way to circumvent this diffraction limitation in photolithography is to rely on soft lithography techniques and nano imprint lithography was one of the front runners. It has seen partial success. I am really not an expert in that area, but you can in principle do that. But uh, please realize that without etching and etching is not part of NIL, because etching we have talked in uh, even in the context of photolithography and we mentioned that it requires separate infrastructure. NIL leads to a film like this. This area uh, one can turn as the remnant layer. So, the structures you make by NIL, uh, it has significant residual stresses embedded in them or I will freshly write. high residual stresses and there are also there is some significantly high surface energy penalty. So, surface any area wise. So, so there, there are issues related to the Laplace pressure because by way of uh, patterning you are increasing the uh, surface area but uh, that is far insignificant compared to these uh, stresses that are piled up. And uh, well, uh, anything with stress is not good. Humans, uh, the doctors always tell you to reduce your stress. The same thing is valid for nanostructures. So, if you now use it uh, for prolonged usage, one notices that the structures tend to flatten out. Uh, one can see this type of cracks or, or sort of pairing like this, which are all signatures of this release of these uh, stresses. Of course, this flattening is not fully attributed to stresses, it is also attributed to the uh, reduction of the surface area or, or slumping phenomena. So, uh, this is one of the aspects of, uh, of uh, one needs to realize, these are very new techniques. So, you can come up with a technique, but uh, whether the, uh, uh, but there might be issues and which might be embedded in the physics of the system itself, uh, which can sort of uh, affect or influence often adversely in the long term stability of the structures and things like that. So, these are uh, things that you, you should know and um, the physics is also of course, very, very interesting. In fact, I must highlight that apparently nano lithography is a nano patterning technique, but the way you can understand the stress accumulation is related purely to the undergrad fluid mechanics you have done either in your in any of your engineering courses. So, see uh, science is pretty seamless. I mean everything that happens as I told before also you, you should be able to explain based on whatever knowledge you have. Uh, so, these are certain comparisons uh, between thermal NIL and the UV NIL. I must mention that despite all the limitations thermal NIL is still the most popular technique and uh, there are instruments available which are very expensive again. Uh, in the commercial market, uh, which uh, you know, practices thermal NIL. Of course, UV NIL also instruments are available. So, of course, no thermal cycling is a very uh, exciting uh, prospect of UV NIL. Uh, no possibility of coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch, it is very fast, uh, very low force required, because the UV curable material is at a liquid state and low viscosity liquid at room temperature. Uh, there might be issues related to uh, volume shrinkage during phase transition, because UV curing is nothing, but there is a transition of phase. And uh, of course, uh, getting uh, uniform layers with spin coating is difficult at times. I would not emphasize this too much, because uh, one can control the spin coating parameters. Uh, getting a new, uh, of course, you need uh, severe restriction in the material that you can pattern 
and you must have a stamp that is UV transparent. Of course, here the limitations or the problems are you need large force, you need high temperature, uh, it's, it's viscous, difficult to handle. Uh, and of course, what I will discuss later, maybe I'll just quickly go there. Stamp release is a big, big problem, stamp, uh, the mold release. Because you will be surprised again to realize it's in fact uh, the no slip condition which we talked about and you saw uh, that it is responsible for this so called generation of high stress. One quick term I just forgot to mention, uh, uh, why or what is this flow locally you see along the walls of the stamp which is going down. If you just compare it is nothing but quit flow. It is because the stamp wall is moving and the liquid layer adjacent to adjacent to it is also moving downward. Here the bottom is stationary in the classical example of quiet flow. Here what is happening because of this accumulation uh, over this control volume here, there is an upward flow. So, the stress, uh, so the velocity gradient is uh, even higher. Uh, but uh, what is interesting is the issues related to mold release is during the pattern replication you saw that this layer of liquid is adjacent to the stamp and it is subject to no slip and it has frozen there. So, the viscosity has increased and now when you want to uh, detach the stamp, you are in fact overcoming this strong adhesion between the liquid layer and the stamp wall at, at each of the side wall of the mold feature and that is uh, often very difficult to uh, uh, sort of overcome. And uh, you in fact need to come up or coat your mold with uh, some sort of uh, mold release agent. In fact, this is also a situation where if you have finite slip on the stamp surface, it is in fact good. Because what will happen if there is a slippage? The this liquid layer adjacent to the stamp will sort of slip and it will not move downward at the same velocity as that of the stamp. So, the effective velocity gradient will be less and uh, the why I raise this point is the moment you actually coat the stamp with this anti adhesion agent which are essentially low surface energy coatings. I have already given you a talked about the spreading coefficient. I will talk in, in, uh, in one of the later classes about one more term, which is essentially rearranging the same terms, uh, what is known as work of adhesion. And uh, you will see that the work of adhesion can be released if the surf substrate surface energy is reduced. So, typically uh, the stamp is coated with some low surface energy material to reduce the adhesion, which also in most cases enhances the slippage. Uh, so, these issues have to be addressed in, in IEL, uh, though the apparently the technique looks very, very simple. Uh, there is another version I, I mentioned before is the solvent vapor assisted NIL. Uh, what it does is it relies on the fact that if you expose a polymeric film, so this is substrate, this is the film, you do not uh, dip it in a liquid uh, in a beaker of solvent, then it will simply dissolve away. But if you sort of expose it to a chamber which has solvent, uh, vapor, because these are often rapidly evaporating solvents. So, low, uh, vapor pressure is pretty high. So, this chamber gets saturated with solvent molecules. Now, this film in fact likes the uh, solvent. So, what is a f uh, the necessary condition for solution? I mean, if you go back to the example we have talked about, in order for just the way in order to have stable colloid, 1 and 1 in a liquid medium 3 should go away from each other. Similarly, dissolution is something very, very similar. Only issue is every molecule of the solute should be surrounded by a layer of solvent. And since it is a good solvent, it is obvious that the molecules want to be surrounded by these uh, solvent molecules. So, what happens is these solvent molecules start penetrating into the film. And what it does is that reduces or that first increases the space between uh, adjacent molecules, adjacent molecules constituting the film or adjacent solute molecules. 
as their space increases the strength of their interaction reduces and what it means is there is an effective reduction in their viscosity and therefore by means of solvent vapor exposure effectively the T g comes down. And if the film has uptaken adequate amount of solvent, it sort of behaves like a liquid at room temperature. So, you essentially eliminate the thermal cycling again, but please understand that as the film accommodates more and more amount of solvent molecules, there is significant swelling of the film. So, you can do a patterning at this stage, in fact people have done it, but then you need to again freeze the structures and what you do? You would like to take the assembly out of the solvent vapor chamber and would like to dry it, but then the solvent when the solvent molecules uh, escape, there can be some issues related to the shrinkage of the film material. And therefore, SVNIL again a nice technique, uh, it can be implemented at room temperature, uh, but uh, there are issues particularly uh, with the shrinkage of the structures during solvent evaporation. Uh, what is next is that uh, all these lithography techniques we have been discussing so far, they have been uh, implemented in, in a batch like mode and engineers are very fascinated to have continuous processes. So, people have tried to uh, transfer NIEL into a continuous platform with a stamp that is in the form of a roller. This is often called as the roller nano imprint lithography and there are very critical issues, but roller nano imprint lithography works very well with flexible surfaces. But there are very, very many critical issues like the temperature has to be very accurately controlled and the viscosity should be absolutely appropriate, the contact time should be absolutely accurate here, so that you get perfect patterns. And then you need to heat up and then cool down immediately, so that the patterns do not flatten out because of Laplace pressure and issues like that. So, this has seen uh, some success and in very specific cases, it is probably industrially used, uh, but it is good to know. Uh, so, uh, with that, I think I will stop my discussion on non imprint lithography. So, I am back to this particular slide, where we now understand that we have learnt two techniques and in the subsequent maybe two classes, we will discuss the remaining techniques. Thank you very much. <laughs>